This is how my project started. I was looking on Facebook Marketplace and I found this truck. 2005 GMC Sierra three quarter ton, four by four, six liter LQ4, 4L80 E. Bam! This one right here represented everything I wanted. So I got in touch with the guy and got a transmission, got a converter, the converter cover, transfer case, drive shafts, all the bolts, the brackets, the sensors, everything that had to do with the four wheel drive transmission and transfer case, even the drive shafts. So I did really well. One place got it all done. The one thing I will tell you you're going to have to pay attention to is there are early versions of 4L80Es and there are later versions. You absolutely want the later version and here's why. In this picture you see where the transmission fluid goes in and out of the transmission. Notice how they're very close together and they're very close to the bell housing. This is the one you don't want. Later on, they revised that casting and made it so one of the transmission lines is mounted way back on the back of the transmission, thereby keeping that part a lot cooler and much better lubricated. So you do want to get the one that has the transmission fluid lines very far apart, one way toward the back and one way toward the front. When it comes to converters, there are lots of options out there. Lots of brands and lots of things you can do. The first of which is you can get the torque converter that was with the transmission. I would recommend to never ever use that torque converter as is. Depending on why that vehicle was down or why you were able to buy the transmission, that thing could have all kinds of metal shavings in it. It could be contaminated with water. You just don't know. So one of your options is to get that torque converter and take it to someone and have them rebuild it. They cut it in half, they go in, they make sure everything's the way it should be, they replace some things. And Another option is to get one from like a Rock Auto or an eBay, a stock replacement. You can also go to a place like Jegs or Summit with good reputations. They've been selling lots of stuff over a lot of years. You can even go to a transmission rebuilder. A transmission rebuilder will have their own line of torque converters that kind of do the same thing as Jegs or Summit only. You can get one dialed in and tell them exactly the vehicle, exactly what you're going to be doing, how you're going to drive it. And they're very good at setting you up with the right unit. This part right here is also one of the parts that you want to get if you can when you get the transmission. This part is the torque converter cover. It's a cast aluminum cover that just covers the bottom of the torque converter flex plate in that area. The reason you want to get this now <laughs> If you forget it, you're going to be looking around for one and you're going to realize they're about 50 to 70 bucks a piece. Then you'll also realize you don't have the bolts to bolt that thing on. So while you're there, if you're getting one from a private seller, get the cover. Another piece that falls into that category, the rear adapter. The reason you want this particular piece is this won't fit on a 4L60E and the 4L60E adapter won't fit on the 4L80E. So this adapter, get it. Here's why you want the transfer case that was behind the 4L80E. That transfer case, while it's not the same part number because it is different from the one in your Hummer, it does have a heavy duty input shaft and planetary gear set. If you were to buy it separately, you could spend a couple hundred bucks. And once you have the 4L80E with the 4L80E adapter plate on the back mounting to that new input shaft and planetary gear set that you took from the three quarter ton truck and put in your Hummer's transfer case, that's the setup. You're done with that portion of the swap. Here's another thing I did when it came to my swap. Like I told you, I got as many parts from the donor vehicle as I could included in that stack of stuff, both drive shafts from the donor truck. When I got done, I realized I didn't need them. The good news is I now had something I could sell. So I put it on Facebook Marketplace and sold both of those drive shafts for a hundred bucks. So here's your second reminder. Get everything you can in this swap. If there's a bolt or a bracket or a hose or a sensor or a wire, get every single thing you possibly can. There is one part of this swap that you could mess up and cost yourself money as you're trying to get the transmission. And that is this thing right here, the range selector. The range selector, when it's installed in the truck, when it's brand new from GM, is installed with a hardening epoxy sort of glue stuff. And it's all over the plug. So when you go to get the transmission, 
Trust me, you do not want to mess with this while laying on your back in the middle of a field. If you can, take some wire cutters, follow those wires off that range selector, go up about a foot, a foot and a half, and cut them up there. This will make it so you can get back to the house and take your time, apply some heat to that plug, which is generally what breaks it loose, without tearing up the switch. Everybody breaks the switch. There's a very low survival rate on those switches. So do yourself a favor and don't break yours. There are three basic options when it comes to how you buy your transmission. So far, we've dealt primarily with buying it from a guy in his backyard. The other options are a dealer or a junkyard. Now, a dealer is going to give you the best of the best. It's kind of like when you buy a car at the dealer. You have the right to expect a warranty. You have the right to have your question. There are certain things that come along with paying the premium on the price. Also, a junkyard has its ups and downs. You generally are going to be able to go to a junkyard and find what you want in one place and maybe even several options. So you can go through and find the one that best suits what you're looking for. I had to ask myself when I was looking for a transmission, how do I want to rebuild this? What do I want to have done to it? Will it be stock? Will it have modifications? Well, I went with some modifications and a very common kit is made by Transgo and it's called an HD2, like heavy duty two. It can be used in anything from a towing application to a racing application. Works well, has a lot of people who like it. That's the Transgo HD2 kit. Couple of odds and ends you're gonna need, the 4L60 to 4L80E wiring kit harness. There are two parts to this harness. As you can see, there's the thicker harness with a round plug on each side. This one is so easy. Once the transmission's in, it plugs on the one side that used to be attached to your transmission, and it goes between your vehicle and the new transmission. There's a plug right on the side, so it's snap, snap, and it's in. The other one is a little more involved, but don't let it freak you out. I'll walk you through it later. The other one has two wires. On one end, it connects to the vehicle speed sensor on the side of your transmission, which you'll be buying one of those. I know you already have one on the side, but you'll be getting another. Good news is it's very cheap. You'll attach it right there at the vehicle speed sensor and then run the wires all the way up to the ECU under the hood, and you're going to be doing a little wiring. Don't freak out though, it's really not a big deal. I will walk you through it. After a while, if you're in a hurry, if you're trying to get some part ordered, you may mess up and say, well, it's for a 2004 Hummer H2. No, no, no. The parts that you're seeking are made for a 4L80E and they're made for the vehicle that you got the parts from. So when you're looking for a flex plate, when you're looking for a flex plate bolts, when you're looking for a spacer, when you're looking for anything, you're looking for parts, in my case, for a 2005 GMC Sierra three quarter ton, four by four, six liter 4L80E. Remember that because you may get a part in the mail and realize it's made for the stock transmission instead of the one you're putting in. It's one of those things that can slip your mind and I'm just trying to save you some drama. There you have it, a boatload of information, lots of pictures. This should keep you busy for a while, at least until video number three comes out where you and I are gonna be on our backs, under the truck. I'm gonna tell you exactly what goes where, how this was done, why this was done. You guys, thank you for watching. Make sure that you click like on this video, make sure you subscribe, and make sure that you turn on the notifications bell. That way, when number three comes along, you'll get to see it as soon as it's done. Once again, thank you guys.